Okay, another problem with patients that have cirrhosis, ascites. So what happens in ascites is you have a low amount of, um, usually these patients have a low amount of albumin, low amount of protein, serum protein. You have pressure that builds up. This pressure leaks out into your peritone peritoneum and usually uh, we all have fluid that creeps across the membranes in your vascular system um, but and the lymph system will pick that up well there's just too much here with somebody that has cirrhosis so consequently the lymph system cannot handle it um, so they start building up pressure in the peritoneum um, so Water follows. Um, the problem also with cirrhosis is aldosterone cannot be um, taken care of in the liver. So the patient's going to retain salt. Water is going to follow salt. So you have high sodium level. You have hypoalbuminemia. The albumin keeps the fluid in the intravascular space. So now that's decreased. So these patients have very large stomachs. Um, the bad thing about that is when it gets too bad, it will affect their breathing. And that's when you need to do some kind of treatments. So patient's gonna be on bed rest just because of ambulation issues, breathing issues. If it's really severe, these patients need to have restricted sodium. Um, treatment would be giving them some albumin, um, diuretics, uh, the best one is spironolactone, aldactone, spironolactone, because that is a potassium wasting, I'm sorry, potassium sparing, diuretic, and you obviously need to have paracentesis if it's uh, compromising their bleeding. Now before we start giving the aldactone, if you're retaining sodium, what's happening to your potassium? Well, your potassium, if you're retaining potassium, you're probably excreting. If you're retaining sodium, you're holding on, you're excreting potassium, sorry about that. So you're retaining sodium and you are secreting in your urine potassium. So some of these patients may be hypokalemic. So that needs to be monitored as well. That's why we would use aldactone, which is potassium sparing, if we're going to give them any diuretics. Paracentesis, they use the needle, they go in and they draw off fluid. Um, draw off fluid, patient needs to void before they have that procedure, so there's not a risk of um, injuring or tapping into the bladder. Hepatic encephalopathy, that's the other major problem with patients that have cirrhosis. So what's going on and what's happening is you have um, ammonia in your, just normally being made, the bacteria in your gut um, makes ammonia. Uh, the ammonia goes through the vascular system, the liver basically converts that to urea and you urinate that out. Well, what happens the pneumonia builds up, you've got cirrhosis, the liver can't compensate, and now you've got high ammonia levels in your blood. It crosses the blood-brain barrier, and it kills brain cells. So these patients then are confused, they're agitated, may have slurred speech. A uh, common thing because of the brain damage and high ammonia, the patient will have hiccups or yawning a lot. Uh, they have asterixis, which is basically if they hold their hands out straight, the palms will basically flap, and that's an asterisky sign. Uh, patients, it gets really bad. They can go into a coma, so not a good thing. So how do you get rid of the ammonia? Well, if the liver was better, it would take care of itself. It's not, so uh, you need to reduce that ammonia level. So one thing you can do is Watch the protein. Protein, when it um, breaks down, that is going to, um, part of the breaking down is the ammonia, which goes to urea. So these patients should be on a very high carb diet, number one, if they're eating. Watch the protein. Protein doesn't have to completely go away, but it's a lot safer. Lactose can be given. 
So that is one thing. Um, so the patient basically excretes the excess ammonia in their feces, but it does cause diarrhea. Another thing is the patient might be given neomycin sulfate, uh, which will kill the gut in the, the flora in the gut, and that will hopefully reduce your ammonia production. So late signs of hepatic encephalopathy, um, you know, notice you've got hyperactive reflexes, slow and deep respirations, positive Babinski's, um, all these things could come along differently for everybody. The bad thing is, is if it doesn't get stopped or it doesn't get reduced, um, the patient is going to go into a coma and die. Now, patients that have hepatic encephalopathy, once you've killed those brain cells, that may be, that'll probably be permanent. If they've got a change of LOC, then it's probably permanent. And if they've got cirrhosis that can't be stopped or corrected, they eventually will probably have a horrible death. So, objective data. What are you going to see with cirrhosis? Well, lots of different things. Um, you're going to have that jaundice. You're going to, patient's going to be anorexic uh, because you are not manufacturing your uh, sex hormones, loss of axillary and pubic hair. Women may be growing facial hair. Men will be growing breasts. Um, altered mentation, loss of libido. Women usually stop their um, periods, so amenorrhea, or they could have heavy menstrual bleeding, could be either one. Um, so, wide range of things. A big thing as well is because of those salts, they're going to have a lot of itching. So, the bile salts get in the skin. So, here's two medications for these patients, cirrhosis. Questran and Adorex, those are the best ones. Uh, giving someone Benadryl for itching um, is just not going to do the job. Another common thing you see is something called palmar erythema on cirrhosis patients. So notice their um, hands are, palms are red, palmar erythema. They also, cirrhotic patients develop spider angiomas, commonplace on your belly. So, only thing these patients can get on trans uh, is a transplant. So you could have cadaver or live donor. These patients though will have to be on cyclosporine, which is an anti-rejection med, which will also reduce your immune system. Rejection rate's not as high as with kidneys, but there's not enough livers to go around. It also depends the reason the patient has uh, cirrhosis. If it's caused by alcohol and they're still an alcoholic, well, they won't get one. Um, there's also other kinds of contraindications.